Look, as long as the volleyball is hot, I think we're all loving it. Let's see if you still feel that way when we are 20 or 30 floor mop-ups into this match by the second set. Early start and an early error for Louisville. Cressy couldn't get it over the net. Point Georgia Tech. Errors are something to watch for this Louisville team. As a whole, they did not hit incredibly efficient against Clemson on Friday. Just 163. They have to clean up some swings tonight. Looper looks deep, and that's off hands, and it's a point for Louisville, their first point of the match. And Louisville will bring Hannah Sherman on into the middle. Sherman's seen a lot of time, although it was the Grand Kong who played the first two sets Friday night against Clemson. Here is Elena Scott, who has been playing great volleyball. And a great attack for Georgia Tech. Liv Mogridge. Hitting 378 on the season, there's a big reason why. She is very efficient, number one on the team. The biggest key for Georgia Tech is establishing their middles as a threat early on. A lot of that comes from having a good pass. That's the biggest focus for Georgia Tech right now, getting a good passing system. Bertolino's got that big arm, and Georgia Tech can't get the point. Louisville sides out to get Bertolino off the service line. Huge for Louisville to side out right away with that tough topspin serve. If Bertolino's back there ripping balls, she can go on long runs. Good for Louisville to get out of it quickly. Nylise Cabello comes on, the freshman to serve. As Emily mentioned, 6-2 for Louisville. It's been one of the stories this year as the two setters alternate. There's Looper up hands and a point for the Cardinals. Already Charity Looper, two swings, two kills. Georgia Tech has to find a way to slow down the outsides. Otherwise, it could be a quick day. Looper had 11 kills, hit 250, had 10 digs in the sweep of Clemson on Friday night. Here is Otene. Tamara Otene, fifth year senior from New Zealand, her third year at Georgia Tech, 14 kills in the five set win over Notre Dame. She's been an ACC Offensive Player of the Week twice already this season. It's not just Otene's offense, her defense, it's like having a little barrow in the backcourt. She is absolutely incredible. Mogridge to serve. Maldonado Diaz gets the kill. This is what makes a 6-2 so tough to stop on Louisville's side because they always have three offensive options. The blockers don't know where to go because you can't just commit with one attacker on a good pass. Charity Looper, five aces on the season, back to serve. And that one floats long. Service error for the cards. Danny Busboom Kelly said recently, Serving pass, something that had been holding the team back, but they were really good in those two areas last Sunday against Stanford. Yeah, those serving and passing numbers have continued to climb this season. Maldonado Diaz and the block is there for Georgia Tech. This is a rotation where Louisville needs to send everything outside. The block for Georgia Tech is much bigger when they're setting their right sides, but a shorter setter up front on Georgia Tech with Emiliano is where Louisville needs to go. Pearson Otene team up for the first block for Georgia Tech. Tied for last in the ACC in blocks per set. Louisville gets the point right back. Tied at five here in set one. That, shot, five. that shot right down the line is something that's going to happen a lot today. With Emiliano up front, just 5-7 for Georgia Tech. They're going to keep sending the ball outside, and those outsides are going to swing line on her. And we have our first towel stoppage. Should we keep a towel count? <laughs> number one. Because <laughs> I can. I a tally a going. Number one. Here we go. Towel, towel tally. Hannah Sherman to serve for Louisville. Otene, that's in. Otene averaging three and a half kills a set. That's tops on the team. Hitting 208. That's a number that's down a little bit. Georgia Tech overall is down at 264. That's sixth in the ACC. But they've been working through some issues at the center position because of injury. No issues for Anna DeBeer, who gets the kill. That's her second of the match. DeBeer is going to continue to swing that line time and time again with the shorter setter up front. She can absolutely rip it up there. Team I, 12 kills in the sweep of Clemson, hit 522 on Friday night. Oh, 
Another big swing from DeBeer. Georgia Tech ready with the defense. Elena Scott. Maldonado Diaz is in. It's not too often that we see Maldonado Diaz taking swings out of the back row. This is the only rotation she's back there when she's serving. It's a bailout set, and she let it rip. Sure did. Maldonado Diaz hit just 0.91 91 on Friday night. Emily mentioned it was a tough night statistically for Louisville. They hit just 163. That's what dropped down, and it's the senior, DeAndre Pierce, with the kill. Deandra Pierce has been one of the most effective attackers for Georgia Tech, just in terms of efficiency, especially when she's running behind the setter. She's really tough to stop. Serving it at Looper. Ellie Glock is in. Louisville out of sync. Chance here for Georgia Tech. Oh, that's Elena Scott doing Elena Scott things, keeping it up. And that drops in, a kill for Georgia Tech. This is a very good start for this Yellow Jacket team. Feels like they're playing off some of the momentum they may have built in the fourth and fifth set in South Bend on Friday. And Emiliano looks really comfortable setting. They have very fast tempo out to the pins, and Louisville hasn't caught on to that. Reese Robbins is denied. Bertolino says it was touched. It was not, according to the officials. Point Louisville. Really smart shot from Bertolino with a massive block in front of her with Robbins, who's 6'5", and Cressy, 6'6". Bertolino knows that she has to swing high, so that's a miss that you're okay with. Bertolino averaging better than three kills a set. 16 kills in the five-setter against Notre Dame. This one is off the line. It's touched, though, by Louisville, and it's a point for Georgia Tech. Larissa Mendez has done such a nice job this season being that go-to attacker for Georgia Tech when they need it. Kind of a true physical opposite that is just in there to take big rips. Sophomore all freshman in the conference last year. 16 kills against Notre Dame on Friday. Robbins. It's got to feel good for Reese Robbins who struggled in, against Clemson on Friday night. Seven swings, five errors, no kills on Friday gets a kill here. And one of those matches that you don't normally see from a player like Robbins, that kind of inconsistency, good for her to find that confidence early on in this one. Back to the middle, that's off the mark as Mogridge misses on the swing and Louisville's back in front. And what's been a very tight first set right from the start. Here's Scott, the ACC Defensive Player of the Week this week for a third time this season. Set back to the right side, and Beer wants that one back. Couldn't handle the swing, and Georgia Tech is tied in. Georgia Tech's doing a really nice job hammering the seams in the court, going for that cross deep corner and splitting defenders in the back row removal side. So here comes the Bertolino serve. It's a handful. Handled by Scott beautifully. Looper hangs in the air, down the line for the kill. I mean, Charity Looper seems like she might hit her head on the ceiling. That's how <laughs> high she's jumping. Check out her attack point. I mean, that set, even though it is fast, it has to be even higher. It's not a true go tempo because she jumps so high. Last two matches for Looper. We talked about the Stanford performance, 11 of those 18 kills in that second set. Bears got that one. Sherman sends it over. Looper's got it up. DeBeer rolls it. Otene, the block there for Louisville. Maldonado Diaz and Sherman team up. Louisville's doing such a good job situationally knowing exactly where the ball is going. The only player that could get this ball was the outside. The blockers were waiting on it to shut it down. A really good finish with the hands. Louisville had 12 blocks in the sweep of Clemson, a plus six in that category. It's a much improved area for the Cards this season. Always a great area for Louisville. Last year was an exception. That's off hands, and Louisville's on a run right now. They have the largest lead of the set, up by three midway through set one. Oh, the swim team. <laughs> oh. They're not going to miss a sun. I mean, 1.30 Sunday is probably a good time. If this was like 11.30 Sunday, maybe they're still sleeping. 
They're here. They're ready to rock. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Looper and Sherman. Louisville's block has come alive. Charity Looper getting up. Look at that press. A little bit of finesse after that one, too. You can see this Louisville block party, second in the ACC, seventh in the country entering play this weekend after going 66th in the country last season. They say that one was touched by Louisville. Danny Busboom Kelly <laughs> checking to see if it was, and I think her team says it was touched, so no challenge coming. Point for Tech. That one is blocked out of play. Louisville's got 15 on the board, and that will get us to a media timeout. First or something. <laughs> well, when you, when you have to discard items of clothing or accessories, everything's in play. Broken glasses, farmer overalls, although there's nothing on the overalls. Or at least I hope something. I know something is out. I'm, let's play volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Someone looked like they just came straight from the night out. Probably did out of the media timeout. It's another point. There are the glasses. There he is. Never defeated. That looks like someone who was on the receiving end of um, an Anna De Beer or a Charity Looper swing. It looks like someone who is sadly defeated. <laughs> Despite what the shirt says. Oh, today, great hustle to get there. That's not going to have enough to get over. And right now, it's all Louisville. Why is it all Louisville right now as Michelle Collier takes a timeout? Louisville's keeping the pressure on Georgia Tech, finding different ways to score. They're forcing over passes, difficult situations that Georgia Tech has not handled. Louisville's defense has been locked in, and they're transitioning that into good offense. Georgia Tech just doesn't have an answer. Louisville hitting 579 at the moment on top. So a little bit of a difference there in terms of how they're running the offense. A little bit more consistency for, from Glock. But Louisville loves that 6-2 system because they have the pieces and the physicality to do it. As a team entering play today, Louisville ninth in the ACC in hitting percentage at 237. That's a number that's going to go up. We talked about a few minutes ago how many top 20 teams Louisville played in conference play. Not about the hitting right now for Louisville. It's all about the defense. That's their third block of this first set. The block has been doing such a nice job of reading the play, watching it unfold. Impressive shutdown up front from Sherman. Four nothing run, second of the set for Louisville. That's a miss hit by Pierce. And another point for the cards who are pulling away here in set one. That's going to be a service error. Remember, we were tied at 10 here in the first set. Things were really clicking for Georgia Tech. Louisville has gone on a run here to go up by seven, even after that service error. Laura Fisher will come on for Georgia Tech. Head up to the front row and heading back to serve is Ashlyn Goolsby. How is Georgia Tech using that center position right now because they've had to change things around Otene with an easy one to throw that down because of an injury to Heloise Suarez. The biggest thing right now is they normally go with Luana Miliano. She's just a 5-7 setter because one of their setters in their 6-2 system they are running for the first half of the season has been out, but they'll use this sub as a blocking sub to make sure they have some height in the front court in a setter back row. That's off the block. Big swing by De Beer. Now, Michelle Collier told us that Suarez, the hope is she'll be back in three weeks. You can see still with the hard cast, broken finger, had surgery there, and the hope is that she'll be back and get back to full speed as quick as possible. You know, you played libero, I think any position, you, you, you have some concern, like, well, <laughs> The hands it's, are your tools in volleyball. Yeah, the hands and the, take? the fingers especially. Yeah. And you wonder, even though she's, yeah, she's going to be cleared to play in three weeks, but how does that affect her setting? You know, is she good to go right away? Can she even really set a ball? It might take longer than that. And to be honest, Georgia Tech doesn't have that kind of time right now. They looked so good at the beginning of the season. Wins over Florida and mm -hmm. BYU. Since then, they haven't found any consistency. 
sent back by Maldonado Diaz and Cressy at the net for Louisville. The defense has been outstanding for the cards. Louisville's block has been absolutely phenomenal. They're doing such a great job working together. And on these balls where it's maybe a little bit off speed, hanging up there just a second longer to shut it down. Camden Tran serving for the cards. That's blocked out of play and a point for Georgia Tech. Now you'll notice Georgia Tech going to a lot more tips because Louisville's block has been so effective, trying to score with off speeds. Otene serves it to DeBeer. DeBeer with the rip, and that's dropped down. Great job by Georgia Tech. Fisher comes into the game. It makes a difference for the Yellow Jackets. That's what Fisher's in there to do. She's in there to be a big blocking presence up against good outsides for Louisville. Maldonado Diaz. And I think she went over the line. Yep, and it's going to be a point for Georgia Tech. So the Yellow Jackets trying to mount a comeback here in set one. Down by five. Crowd gets a little louder here at l &N, trying to rally Louisville. And Kara Cressy responds. That ends the 3-0 run for Georgia Tech. A sneaky swing from Kara Cressy. Watch where her shoulders are facing. It's the opposite way of where she swings this ball. So impressive to bring it back to zone one. First kill for Cressy on her second swing. Here's Maldonado Diaz. Off the block. That's the point for Georgia Tech. A gutsy swing outside from Bertolino, knowing there's a big block in front of her, she still manages to get past it with that heavy arm. There's Sofia Velez, the junior libero from Trinity Valley Community College, Tal Delay. We do have actually someone on staff keeping tabs on how many Tal Delays. Or are you our staff? I've person? also got our tallies going. <laughs> Someone on staff, a.k.a. me. Oh, on the overpass, an easy one. Oakridge. It's gotten a little loose here for Louisville, and Georgia Tech taking advantage now within four. That's why you can't get comfortable with the lead, not with a team like Georgia Tech. Continue to bring it. And these programs have had some fierce battles over the last five, six years or so, and it's all Georgia Tech right now, and I think Danny and Kelly has seen enough. Yes, she will take a timeout here, and that look tells you the story. Not a lot of smiles right now for Louisville as Georgia Tech or to Louisville. So it has been quite the gauntlet. We joked around about it wasn't much laughing from Michelle Collier pre-match just about that schedule. But the next nine matches on the schedule after today are against teams that are currently not ranked in the top 25. So the schedule will lighten up for a little bit before, as Emily pointed out, it gets tough again in conference play. Out of the timeout, Cressy on the slide, denied. Was it touched? It was by Louisville, and it's a point for Georgia Tech. Now within two, great fight here, and a challenge card being shown by Danny Busboom Kelly, so we'll have our first challenge of the match. Original decision is that there is a touch. Louisville is challenging, there is no touch. Dwayne Holden will now go to the monitor after letting us know and everybody here at the LNN Arena what they're looking at. So again, the call on the court is touch. And as we know, these are difficult. <laughs> yeah. Usually on these plays, though, a little bit easier to tell if it's no touch. Let's see a look at it. I mean, based on this Cressy. look. Cressy's left hand we're looking at probably, or maybe the right, but maybe. it's Cressy. Got Cressy that middle, 13 in black. Mm -hmm. The ball looks like it goes right between them. I was like, targeted the seam real well. Normally you're looking for a finger bent backwards. Here it doesn't look like we see a finger bent back. Rocket back and forth. <laughs> So remember, it was 17-11 Louisville. Georgia Tech has fought back. Is that right between the arms? It look, to me, it looks between the arms, but again, it has to be 100% conclusive.
to overturn it or confirm it. Now they're below it up. Now I, there's no fit. That's a good view there when you talk about Emily looking yeah. for a finger bouncing back. The question is, I think it's more Robbins than Cressy from that angle. Was it off her left wrist? After review, there is no touch. It will be point Louisville. Sean Collier wants to talk it over with Dwayne Holbin after that review. And that's a big shift. All of a sudden, it's 23-19 rather than 22-20, just when Georgia Tech started coming back. So a successful challenge by Louisville. And as Emily says, it goes from a two-point advantage to a four-point advantage for the Cards, and now two points away from taking set one. Collier spoke her piece, and now here is De Beer to serve. Good serve, handled by Georgia Tech. Saved by Ellie Glock. Robbins. Tough one for Bertolino. Glock for Robbins. That's off the antenna. Point Georgia Tech. This is where Louisville has to play as clean as possible to finish up this set. Georgia Tech on the other side, they also have to find a way to play clean. Back in this 6 2 system. Miliano will come back to serve, and Mendez up front, Georgia Tech's go-to. Louisville now down to 321 hitting percentage in this set. Second error for Robbins. Looper, you need a point. You go to Charity Looper, and it is set point for the Cards. Scott with the float. The long way kept up by Looper on the bid by Mendez. Georgia Tech has to bump it over. It's Scott for Glock for Looper for the set. We are proud to recognize. It's been a big plus for Georgia Tech offensively. Her efficiency with the serve. And the block continues. Four in set one. There's the first of set two for Louisville. You cannot test out Kara Cressy on these box. She has been absolutely a, a, a phenomenal this season, just shutting down opponents left and right. Her blocking game, taken to the next level. And an ace, the first of the match for either team. It goes to Anna DeBeer, her 15th of the season. It's best on the team. Those are two high momentum plays on Louisville's side. Georgia Tech has to find a way to side out right now and not let Louisville start off 3 0. DeBeer de Velez, Bertolino with the easy touch over the nets for the point for the Yellow Jackets. And now Bertolino back to serve. Honorable mention All-American a season ago. First team All-Conference. Closing in on 1,000 career kills. And serve into the net. First service error for Michelle Collier's team. 3-1. Elena Scott back to serve for the cards. Looper. Mendez. Scott got there. Glock for Looper again. Bella. A little bit of self defense right there. Point Cardinals. Charity Looper is doing such a nice job varying up her attack. She threw in one roll shot that was an easy play on Georgia Tech side. That time went back to the hard swing high hands. 875. Those aren't bad hitting numbers, huh? No, I think those are pretty good. <laughs> Scott, good serve. 
Louisville a chance to add to their lead. Georgia Tech there defensively. Velez kept it up. Scott does the same for Louisville. Looper off the line, off hands. And the block, Sherman and Robbins. Block number six for Louisville. Louisville's block is working so well together. The pins have done a nice job setting it up, getting their middles involved in the play. And watch, it's an inside set, so Robbins comes in to allow Sherman to get her hands on it. And this press, I mean, look at that. That's a wall. Already four blocks for Hannah Sherman. Who came in averaging just under a block and a half per set. Miliano, and how about another? <laughs> Sherman. <laughs> Sherman can't believe it! Just shutting down the opponent left and right. Teaming up. I love the reaction, too. Yeah. That's one thing from Louisville. We saw it all time. Charity Looper has to cover him out there. Yeah, we got the block party shirts out and everything. The Louisville, they know how to celebrate. Yeah, they're all time celebrators. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Undefeated in that. Out of the timeout, they ice Elena Scott. I thought it was great. We were there courtside last week. Charity Looper went off. She came over and sat with us for an interview afterwards. And she had some, just some great comments about how she had to fight back, coming back from her knee injury, wondering if she'd ever play again. But I know we both kind of looked at each other when she said, I dreamed about this match and playing this way. And we showed her the celebration she had. That one's in. Another celebration here for Louisville. That she had dreamed of that celly, as she said. And you talk about someone in the zone, in the zone on the court, and in the zone in her sleep as well, apparently, for Charity Looper. It's one thing to visualize maybe in the locker room before a game or the morning of a match, but to sleep and to know <laughs> that you're going to put up 18 kills against a top three opponent and have the celebrations on the side, too. Just a special player all around. Miliano, a good save by Mendez to keep it in play for the moment because Looper is going to work again. When a player's feeling themselves like this, it becomes so difficult to stop because that confidence just keeps going up and up, taking those swings up a notch. I think back to what Danny Busboom Kelly said recently, that she's much more aggressively, Looper is, offensively, avoiding some of the tips or rolls that we saw last year, just going for it, playing with a little less fear. And she has been a fearless player. Georgia Tech gets a point back here. Looper also just looks like she's playing a lot more comfortable and confident. Just the way she moves around the floor, even when the ball isn't in her hands, you can tell that aura about her is just a, a winner. That kind of aura can be infectious. There's yeah. no question about it. Aldonado Diaz. Bozy into the match, and Bozy couldn't save it off the net. And it's a point for the cards. Georgia Tech going back to that 6-2 because they know they have to have some height in front to stop Louisville's outsides. Louisville hitting 500 this set. Georgia Tech hitting negative thanks to the block from Louisville. And that number's going to come down a little bit more. Otene, balance, couldn't clear the net. This is where Georgia Tech has to make a push. They can't give Louisville this much momentum. They have to keep the ball in play and keep the pressure on the Cardinals. Looper with the float. Otene comes to meet it. Tabir with the kill for the cards. Georgia Tech throwing up a triple block on the outside, bringing their outside blocker all the way over. And Adabir isn't scared of that. She's going to swing right at it. <laughs> and Adabir hitting 522 on Friday. Error free match for Adabir. That's going to be a battle at the net. And Louisville reached over. Cabello disagrees. So Cabello as a backcourt setter, if she takes this ball over the net and then it touches the blocker or the other side, that's considered a back row attack. It's a fault. Bonanado Diaz got a lot on that. The set by Cabello. Another point for Louisville. 
This is where it might become difficult for Georgia Tech with new players on the floor blocking next to each other. See that timing just a slightly off, allowing a lot cross court for them to hit through. Camden Schran comes on to serve. Goolsby. That's off the tape and off of Louisville. Point for the Yellow Jackets. Not the prettiest set, but a nice finish from Bianca Bertolino up front. This ball soaring past the antenna, but gets on it a little bit faster to put it in the block. Trying to work it to the middle. Battle at the net. One by Cressy for Louisville. Usually on these 50-50 balls, Kara Cressy is absolutely taking care of. When they're right on the tape, she just asserts her dominance up front. Dominance is the word that comes to mind right now for this second set. Louisville hitting 462. Georgia Tech still negative, and another point for Louisville. Michelle Collier has already burned one time out. Will she do another here or just let no, she'll take it right now? It's 14-5 and trying to do whatever you can. You see the numbers right there here in this second set. Georgia Tech can get nothing going against Louisville's defense. So they'll try to regroup here down by nine here. In degree <laughs> out the window. Well, don't tell your family that. They paid a lot for that <laughs> Northwestern degree. Unstoppable is the word she used. Instoppable <laughs> is a new Emily Eamon word. Oh, good job by Georgia Tech just to keep it up. Fisher was trying to find her bearings, got up to keep it in play. Scott bumps it over. De Beer. And that one's in. Bertolino with the kill. Good fight by Georgia Tech. A yeah, really good response from Tech side, finding ways out of long rallies. This is something they do well. Their defense is good and continue to keep the ball up. They just haven't been able to transition that into good offense out of it. Luana Emiliano will head back to serve. Good to see her out there. She rolled her left ankle in the first set at Notre Dame. Did come back late in that set. Ended up finishing with 42 assists. That's out of play. And Louisville will get the point. It's great to see her out here for Georgia Tech because they don't have depth at that position right now, the center position. Okay, with Suarez out, they really just have Emiliano and Goolsby who's setting the other half of this 6-2 right now. But they really want to use Emiliano. She's just a little bit too short to run that 5-1. I think the Bear thinks that one was in. It was called out, and Danny Busboom Kelly will go to the challenge card. Anna the Bear had the best view in the building because it was right down the line where she was serving, and she was pretty confident right away that it was in. The original call is that the ball was out. Louisville is challenging that it was in. If you were with us last Sunday, Danny Busboom Kelly was three for her first three on challenges, and we joked around with her during the intermission <laughs> it's gonna be close intermission that she should head over to churchill downs and place a bet now emily it just has to catch any piece of that white line correct any piece of that white line interesting decision for otanay not to just stop at the line how so because you don't want to get hit with the ball normally you're told stop at the line so you don't get hit if it goes out of bounds Yeah, the verdict is in. After review, the call is confirmed. Louisville's charged with one challenge. Anna DeBeer has a look of someone who's like, what? Huh? <laughs> kind of hard to tell, too, with Otene kind of legs in the way. You might have thought you saw something you didn't. So one challenge remaining for Louisville. If we get to a fifth set, they'll be awarded an additional challenge. Right now, in control, up by eight. And here's Bertolino trying to get that serve going, but Louisville's ready for it. Scott sends it over. Emiliano, back for Mendez, and another block. Looper leading the charge. Eight blocks for Louisville. It's a complete block party on Louisville's side of the net. They're also getting it done with everyone in the front court. It isn't just one person. The pins have done a really nice job setting it up. 
Four blocks in set two after four blocks in the first set. There it is. Looper with the up. Back row attack from De Beer. Stopped by Georgia Tech. Looper off hand. Velez, good save. Scott calls for it. Reese Robbins missed the mark. Point Georgia Tech. Good job by Velez, who had some great plays in that fifth set against Notre Dame. And a really good touch off the block, and Velez, very dynamic and athletic with her movements, can explode out to make a play like that. She's been really fun to watch so far this season. I mean, she just covers that court so well. That's going to be out. Service error number two for Georgia Tech. Cabello back to serve for Louisville. Cards with three straight wins to start conference play. Eliano with the set to Bozy. Bozy playing in her fourth set this season, making a contribution here against fourth ranked Louisville. Good pass allows this middle attack to happen. Bertolino laying out for it, and Bozy did a good job just putting it down. To the middle, Sherman with the kill for Louisville. Louisville is passing insanely well. They're at about 60% in system for contact session. Usually the goal that you want to have, but you oftentimes don't hit it throughout a match, especially total, usually the goal for one individual player, usually the libero is 60%. They're doing a really nice job passing the ball in system, allowing those middles to run. And the block. Everyone contributing to the block party, joining the block party. Peyton Peterson, the freshman. Peterson stepping in and stepping up. Everyone's getting a little bit of a taste of it. Peterson appearing in her 11th set of the season. Sent back by Louisville, kept up by Otene. Louisville's getting their hands at everything at the net right now. One may have been heading out. Velez taking no chances. Tight at the net. Picked off by the Yellow Jackets. Scott knew it was going to be dumped down there, but it was out of play. So it is a point for Louisville. Just the wheels falling off on Georgia Tech's side. A lot of plays that don't really agree with who they're setting in certain situations. You don't have to force the right side. Send an easy ball outside. So in your estimation, they're trying to do too much. They're trying to do way too much. Just Keep send the ball simple. outside, especially in chaotic situations. Get the ball high for your pin. So service error for Louisville helps out Georgia Tech. That's the fifth for the cards. And Otene will head back to serve for Georgia Tech. Point Yellow Jackets. Danny Busboom Kelly will grab the card and challenge here. So she was just unsuccessful a few moments ago. In or out will be the call here. The original call is Point Georgia Tech. Louisville is challenging that the ball was in. So they are unsuccessful on that challenge a moment ago on the serve by De Beer. Louisville's unsuccessful. They will be out of challenges for set three, and if we get there, set four. Our crew is taking a peek as well to see what we have. And we'll look. Was this in or out? Once again, it is close. And again, the question is, is there enough there? And by enough there, meaning is there any black? Looks in. Okay. Remember, it was called out. 
Does it catch the back part of that line? Again, any part of the line. Frame by frame. Based on that look, it looks like the ball is on top of the line. After review, the ball was in. It would be point to our back Louisville. So a successful challenge this time. Louisville with one challenge remaining. And the call is overturned. Much like late in the first set, which was much closer than where we are right now. A late challenge successful for Louisville. And a swing that puts them on top by 11. Trend. That one was heading out. Fellas played it. The block. Bertolino offhand and a point for Georgia Tech. Big answer right out of that long challenge for Georgia Tech. They needed a high momentum. They have to find a way to string together a few now. A good finish on the outside. Bertolino getting multiple swings within that rally, but finds a way to get it done. Six kills now for Bertolino on 16 swings. Otene with a team high 21 swings so far. And Georgia Tech takes advantage of a Louisville miscue. Make it back-to-back -back points. That started from the surface line. So Villafela is putting in a bullet from the end line to force the overpass. This one floats long. Service error from Velez. Third service error for Georgia Tech. And Louisville three points away from going up two sets to none. Georgia Tech trying to up the ante on the service pressure. That's why you're seeing those errors happen because Louisville's passing so well. Ellie Glock will come on. Glock with the float. Goolsby back to Fisher. Velez kept it in the air. Otene floats in and drops it in. Tamara Otene with the point for Georgia Tech. This is what happened during set one. Georgia Tech was down at that point, 17 to 11, and then made that push. Something about being down late in sets, that's where Georgia Tech turns it on, but they have to find a way to do that earlier on in the set. That's out, and Georgia Tech gets another point. But to your point, Emily, is it too little, too late for the Yellow Jackets? That's why volleyball's fun. You just never know. You could be down 24 to 0 and come back. Have you seen that happen before? Nope. Okay. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're seeing from Georgia Tech is much better. The best they've played this set. Now within seven. Well, look, a lot of it, too, is maybe you don't win this set, but you bring a lot of momentum headed into the next one. 100%. You need something to build on here, and this is certainly something to build on. But then it comes crumbling down when Robbins has an easy swing to get the point for Louisville. And for Louisville's side, they need to do a better job of finishing. And when they have that lead, not getting complacent and keeping the pressure on Tech. Here is Peterson to serve for Louisville. Miliano with a low, quick pass, setting up for the kill and a point for Georgia Tech. Mogridge. These are the things that Georgia Tech can build on. Okay, when we're in system, we're doing really well. We have to find a way to keep that. Well, if Georgia Tech was going to go on a run, they have someone who can get hot at the service line. We have not seen it yet today. Here's Bertolino. Louisville's handled the serve so far. And they side out again on the Bertolino serve. Looper with the kill. Set points for the cards. Scott serves for the set. Emiliano. And that's going to do it. Point for the cards. They say four contacts. Georgia Tech, KCC. And it's Georgia Tech that will serve to start set number four. Uh, set number three, rather, as they try to get to set number four. 
And it's a good start for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has to bring pressure from the end line. Louisville's passing has done a phenomenal job keeping their offense in system. Good start for Georgia Tech. Off the tape, DeBeer goes down to get it. Robbins, kept up by the Yellow Jackets. And that one was touched by Louisville. It's a point for Georgia Tech and a great start for the Yellow Jackets out of the break. Down two sets to none. This is where Michelle Collier will find out about her team. Can they battle back with their backs against the wall? Yeah, you just saw the gesture. Let's just keep the tempo going. Keep things moving forward here. Good job by Georgia Tech to keep it in play. This one has to head over, and it is going to be off the mark. It's one of the things that have stood out about Georgia Tech during Michelle Collier's time in Atlanta, now in her 11th season, just their tempo, trying to keep pressure on teams. And I know they've had some issues in the center position because of injury there, but it just seems they've been a half step behind what we've expected in the past. And that energy hasn't been there sometimes as well. Yeah, a lot of the same pieces offensively, too, for Georgia Tech. Pretty much the same front line as we've seen over the past season as Louisville puts that one down. It's just that setting position they haven't had consistency. And with Emiliano now running a 6-2 with her and Goolsby, they haven't found consistency with their attackers. Elena Scott back to serve even at two here in set three. Miliano, well done to get it to Mendez for the kill. Now we're seeing Georgia Tech start to find their rhythm. Emiliano doing a good job putting her hitters in good situations to put the ball down. Can Otene build some momentum as she heads back to serve? Block to the middle, and that's a miss by Sherman. Back-to-back -back points for Georgia Tech. This is where Louisville can't get comfortable. Up too well, they have to find a way to stop it now and stop the bleeding. Looper off the tape. Point Georgia Tech. Three straight points now for the Yellow Jackets. All of a sudden, this is where Tech has some confidence. Going back, they're hitting serves harder and harder. All Georgia Tech right now. And Danny Busboom Kelly is going to take a timeout. Well, maybe Louisville thought things were going to come easy here in this third set, but Georgia Tech with other ideas, and Louisville against Georgia Tech. Luber hitting nearly 600 so far to start the day. She has done it in every way possible. Ripping balls, cross court, going down the line. Looper is a freak athlete. She's just 5'9", but can jump through the gym and is one of the most explosive attackers that you'll see. And some of those celebrations, if you watch her, she's got a lot of swag to her. Right now, Georgia Tech looks like a different team in this third set. What's been different in your eyes about the Yellow Jackets after dropping those first two sets? Georgia Tech has really upped the service pressure. They're knocking Louisville out of system at a high clip to start the third, something that we haven't seen so far. Louisville with three straight wins, all in conference play, most recently against Clemson on Friday. Georgia Tech won in five sets at Notre Dame, and out of the timeout, it's a point for Louisville, and who else but Looper ending the Georgia Tech run. When Louisville needs a point, they're oftentimes going to Looper on the outside. She is so dependable out there. Charity Looper, last week against Stanford, had 18 kills, 11 in the second set. Good match so far, and a good serve here for the freshman center, Nyalise Cabello, for Louisville getting the ace. This is what Louisville needs in this third set. They have to find a way to up the ante despite being up 2-0. They have to keep the pressure on Tech. Third ace for the cards today as Cabello puts it back into play. The block has been outstanding all match long for Louisville, and they get another one here. Ten blocks on the day so far for the Cardinals. It has been a block party here in Louisville. The middle's just shutting it down up front. It's a brick wall up there. Bertolino dug out by Scott. Looper 
Great job by Velez to keep it up for Georgia Tech. Maldonado Diaz. Cabello, back row attack, De Beer. Good defense by Georgia Tech, great point here. Both teams coming up with great plays defensively. De Beer tries again. And that one drops in. Point of the match for Georgia Tech. How about the defense on both sides? The intensity turned up. You can tell Louisville, Georgia Tech fighting to keep every ball. Especially in Georgia Tech, some really difficult shots that they're managing to put down. Every time I look over to see Michelle Collier, the head coach for Georgia Tech, she's just giving that motion. Keep the pressure going. Keep the tempo up. Let's go. No stopping that. Swing though. Louisville gets the point back. This is much like what we saw to start off the first set. Georgia Tech Louisville threw about the first 10 points. The level of play was high. The speed was high. And the defensive intensity where it is right now. In this second, third set rather, Georgia Tech out hitting Louisville 250 to 100. And there's a successful attack from the middle. Deandra Pierce, the senior from Austin, in her second season with Georgia Tech after transferring over from Texas. You see the hitting percentage by set. How it has been flipped by Georgia Tech here in the third. And Louisville's defense, set one and set two, insane, especially up at the net. Louisville, though, finding ways in the 6-2 system for them. Goolsby, the other setter here for Georgia Tech in the 6-2, comes on. That's a miss hit by Schoen for Louisville. So a point for Georgia Tech, up by three. Diaz. Velez calls for it. Bertolino with the great play by Scott. Pulled off the net by Louisville. We play on. Bertolino. That was touched. Point Georgia Tech. Elena Scott incredible up on Louisville's side, but Georgia Tech, this is what they needed to do. Just keep the pressure on Louisville, force them to make a play, and now Georgia Tech's converting a lot of these transition plays, something they didn't do during the first two sets. It is very warm outside in Louisville today, 85 degrees outside in the cozy confines of LNN Arena. Thousand or so, thousand plus packed in. It's been warm inside this building as well. De Beer, that missed the mark. They say it was touched. Michelle Collier takes it. At our down official, Dwayne Holbin, she is not going to get the challenge card. You're aiming for those fingertips. If it goes off, it's a point. Late call, but she got it. DeBerry now with seven kills, hitting 429. DeBerry. No touch this time. Point Georgia Tech. Louisville's trying to do just a little bit too much on some of these swings. They were. Locking balls, thumping them right into the court. Now trying to find their momentum back and that consistency that we saw through the first two. Second attack error for De Beer. She did not have an attack error Friday night against Clemson. Sent back. Kara Cressy at the net. Oval. What a read from Cressy up front. Committing with the middle, meaning it's a perfect pass. She knows that middle is going to get the ball on the opposing side. Just a fantastic move and even better finish. Maldonado Diaz with the ace. Back to back, two high momentum plays on Louisville's side. Georgia Tech has to find a way to side out right and not give Louisville any momentum. The swim team in the house. Swim team got some early momentum to take off all the clothes that they had on because Louisville came out firing for set. And now Georgia Tech fighting back here in set three. That's Leah Harper. Big swing for Leah Harper to come in. Georgia Tech going back to the 6 2 system, meaning they're using two setters that are in the backcourt. He's having the attackers in the front, and Leah Harper plugs in at that second side. Velez with the serve. Cressy. That's a little bit too much. Another attack error for Louisville. 
They are hitting negative here in this third set. The swings that Louisville's missing aren't swings that they need to miss. For example, that one, it doesn't have to be a perfect shot right on the end line. Just go to right back, take the setter out, because they're always back row for Georgia Tech. Cards at 3.55 in set one. And they get an attack here from Anna DeBeer. That's successful. Point for the Cardinals to bring them within three, and DeBeer will head back to serve. Eight kills for De Beer, hitting 375. Looper setting the pace for Louisville. 11 kills, 556 for Looper. Otene. Just a little finesse from Otene. Not a player that normally goes to off speeds because she has such a strong arm. That's what makes the off speed so effective when you can know that that defense is back on their heels. Throw in an easy roll shot right to the middle. Juan Emiliano will head back to serve for Georgia Tech on top by four here in the third. Block for Cressy off the hands. Point Louisville. Louisville also in this 6-2 system, meaning they always have three attackers, but they're a little bit more dynamic in that they still have their middles run behind the setter, and they'll bring the right side in front of the setter for cross patterns. Landis Scott to serve. Oh, Scott can't handle that one. You don't say that very often about Elena Scott. No, one of, if not the best libero in the country right now with the numbers that she's putting up. Over five digs per set. She has been phenomenal this season. Looper. That's going to be another kill for Charity Looper. Give her 12 for the match. Just such a high IQ player. We talk so much about how athletic she is, but she has great court vision. She sees the block so well. It's really all areas of her game that we've seen blossom in the last year. Once again, it's the combination of Looper and De Beer setting the pace for the cards, combining for 20 of their 36 kills. Bertolino got a lot on that one, and not enough room for Louisville to track it down here at LNN. And it's another point for Georgia Tech. Much better for the Yellow Jackets, and the score tells a story here in this set for Georgia Tech on the attack. A smart swing right through the seam in the block for Georgia Tech. Lena Scott trying to fill it, but it's tough when it's coming that fast. Maldonado Diaz for Looper on the right side now. Left side, right side, back row, you name it, she does it. If Louisville needs a point, they will go to Charity Looper time and time again. It doesn't matter where she is on the court. She's a Cardinals hot hand. 13 kills for Looper. Talk about the Georgia Tech efficiency. They're hitting 368 this set, Emily. They had nine kills and nine errors last set. That's efficient right there. <laughs> Pierce with the kill. The biggest difference for Georgia Tech has been that the passing has gotten a lot better this set. That allows the middle attack to happen because the blockers for Louisville can't guess where the setter's going. And the hitters are doing a much better job of actually keeping the ball in play. The setting location a bit tuned up from set one and two. DeBeer reloads. That one's going to be right over the tape. Set back by Sherman. DeBeer spins it over. Ball continues to spin. Bertolino. That one is set back by Elena Scott, and off hands, kill for De Beer. point Louisville. Might not come in the first two swings, Anna De Beer is gonna keep swinging at that ball to give it all she can up front. That's what makes a good outside attacker. You have to continue to stay in the play, swing after swing. This is the jump that she's made just this season through the first eight matches, just about 2.25 kills a set. The last five, she's doubled her efficiency and is up to 3.6 kills per set. That tells you how good she's been. It's been a great run. At Kentucky, she had 13 kills, hit 300. Against Nebraska, that was a loss, but she still had 12 kills, hit 308. The rest of the team had 075 in that match. 10 kills against Stanford. That's going to be a point for Georgia Tech. That's one thing that's been different. Georgia Tech has had an answer for whatever Louisville has done here in this set. Uh, they are up by four here in set number three. 
during the first two sets, Georgia Tech had that late push at the end, but they found a way to start it from the beginning to give them that comfortable cushion here late in set three. Bertolino with the ace. Louisville looks to the bench. They have one challenge remaining, so Danny Busboom Kelly has to think about it here. I think she's just going to take a timeout. We will take the timeout as well. Noted by Bianca Bertolino because it looks like it caught just enough of the line where it probably would not have been reversed, and that would leave Louisville without a challenge for the rest of this set and set four if we go there. That would be massive and huge for Bertolino right now to find that consistency on serve because she struggled with the first two sets. That was her first ace of the match, third in the ACC with 25 aces heading into play today. De Beer well off the line, missed the mark, and Georgia Tech is the first team to 20 here in set three. Such an impressive turnaround for Tech coming into this third set, just a completely different mindset. I really think it started at the start of this set. Remember, they jumped out to that 6-2 mm -hmm. lead. They scored the first two points, then went on a 4-0 run. Good one from Bertolino, well done by Looper just to get it up. And De Beer found the spot where no one was occupied. Point, Cardinals. Huge for Louisville to not only get the ball back, but to also get Bertolino back off the service line because when you're a topspin server and you get in rhythm, you start hitting it harder and harder. Top of the hour will get you to Baylor and TCU on ESPN. If you want to continue to watch this match, stay with us on the ACC Network. Bonus coverage here on ESPN after... Texas had the sweep of Florida in Gainesville. Maldonado Diaz misses the serve. That is service error number six for Louisville. Looking more and more like we'll have a fourth set here at l &N Arena. I always love more volleyball. <laughs> Sitting next to someone who I don't think attended enough volleyball matches in the last... 72 hours. I think you could have squeezed in a high school match somewhere in the Louisville area I last should night. have with how yeah, good it it was, is. Yeah, Assumption and Mercy maybe, yeah. you know, could have took something in on that. That's point for the Cardinals to make it 21-16 here in the third. This is where Louisville has to turn it on with Charity Looper up front. Louisville's hot hand. They got to get her going to try to catch back up. So Anna DeBeer will head back to serve here for the Cardinals. Hoping to go on a surface run here. And cut into this deficit. Louisville took set one 25-20. Hit 3.55 in set one. They won set two 25-16. But right now Georgia Tech in control here in the third. Block for Looper. Bellas in position. Otene, Cressy sent it back. Bertolino over. Block to Cressy. More good defense by Georgia Tech. Good defense by Scott. Back row attack to Beer. Looper with the left hand. Otene missed the line. Point Louisville. That is what good defense gets you on Louisville's side. Just finding ways to dig in, keep the ball off the floor. You might not score points on defense, but you keep the pressure on the other side and force the opponent to try to make a play. DeBear is serving, now down by four. And that floats long. Service error number seven for the cards. And it's back to a five-point advantage for Georgia Tech. Louisville out of timeout. Busboom Kelly took one at 6-2 in the first set. And Emiliano back to serve. Block for Robbins. Robbins, a good swing. That connection hasn't looked incredible all night long, but coming into set three, Robbins did a much better job handling a set. 
For those of you watching on ESPN, we're going to get you to Baylor and TCU. Switch over to the ACC network, if you're not already there, of course. If you want to continue to watch this showdown, top 25 matchup between Louisville and Georgia Tech. Emiliano Mendez. Looper with a point for Louisville. Louisville has never lost in Louisville to Georgia Tech. Last year, Louisville lost to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Georgia Tech let set points get away in set two and set four in the meeting last year here. A miss hit by Otene. And Louisville is now within two here in the third. And the crowd can sense the energy and momentum in Louisville's way. Off the tape. And the block. Charity Looper. Looper with a little bit of boxy up front. Big players make big plays at the right time. That was clutch from Charity Looper. 4-0 here in this third set, but no fight in Elena Scott. No fight lost by Elena Scott, and always a fight by the cards, certainly. 4-0 running right now, 22-21, and Scott serving. Try to keep the run going. And a block by Sherman. Louisville has tied it at 22. Another massive play up front, just clutch from the middle. Hannah Sherman reading that so well. A perfect pass. It always goes to the middle. Absolutely phenomenal. Back row attack. Off the mark. Point Louisville. 6 nothing run. And they have come back to lead it 23-22 here in the third. How about this service run by Elena Scott? Keeps it going. Velez handles it. Looper kept it up. Scott over. Mendez. Scott couldn't handle that one, and that ends the run. So it was a 6 0 run to put Louisville in front, and now we're tied at 23. Remember, you have to win by two. Georgia Tech needs to win this set to force a fourth set. Otene. Service error. Match point. Louisville. <laughs> Nihilis Cabello will serve. Scott with the dig. Oh, miscommunication, but Louisville still in the point. Off hands. Scott sets it. Maldonado Diaz, pretty tight. Sherman kept it alive. Looper blocked back, and Georgia Tech fights off a match point. Staying in the play, that's exactly what you have to do at this point in the match. That defensive intensity has to pick up, and you have to keep the ball over. Liv Mogridge serving for the Yellow Jackets. Looper. Touch. Match point number two for Louisville. And guess who's serving for the match? Charity Looper. With the float. Scott kept it up. De Beer blocked back. And once again, Georgia Tech has fought off a match point. Georgia Tech is not backing down. Doesn't matter how many match points they're going to fend off. This is a team that's going to continue to fight. 
Ashlyn Goolsby back to serve. To Beer. Match point number three coming for Louisville. Punch for punch, this match feels like a late December match. Both sides, the execution so high, siding out at such a high clip. 11 kills now for Anna De Beer. Anna Sherman to serve. Match point number three for the Cards. Looper sent for De Beer. And Louisville comes from behind in set three to get another ACC sweep.